Hollywood Divas Reunion Part 1. Okay, now I will put the link to the full episode down below in the description box when it is av available, okay? So until then, it'll say review. You'll know if the link is down there because it won't say review anymore. Alright, so I ain't trying to mislead y'all. So go ahead, hit the thumbs up for your girl for hooking you up. Alright, first off, 1K subscriber gift giveaway. Must like, share, and subscribe. I am doing the reunion on the show because my reviews for this show, it just wasn't getting that many views. So I don't know if this reunion is going to get many views. Okay, but I'm just, I just waited to do the reunion, alright? So we're going to get into it. So first off, they're talking about coming in as, you know, black actresses that people basically call irrelevant and said they were, they were some has-beens. And Paula says she rather been a has-been than a never was, okay? And, you know... Golden goes on uh, how they talk about people like Charlize Theron or whatever the, the lady name is who's taken off work for five years to raise family and stuff. They don't call them has-beens. They just come back to work and get, you know, back to it. But as black women or black people, when you gone for five years or something like that, they call you a has-been. They don't try to give you a chance. And it is. She says, why do, why do we do that to each other? But I mean, that's just the truth of the matter is that we, that's what it is. Like, you know, I know if I don't see or hear somebody in entertainment or whatever for a while, I don't be like there has been sometimes. Sometimes people are just, you know, fads. They in, they was on the hot show, or they was on, you know, they had a hot song or a couple of hot songs or album or something like that. Sometimes they're just fads. And some people are only one hit wonders and they only there for a time. But I know I'm like, okay, you know, where have they been? But shit, some people just don't want to hear from you. They don't want to give you a chance. I'm. For the most part, I try to give more people a chance. You know, I don't feel like you lose your talent just because you've been gone for a while. Okay, if you really got talent, then you got talent. We do need to start being easy on black people like that. You know, it, I don't understand why do we treat each other like that. Like, there has been. Yes, they have not been on the show in a while, but that's why they're on reality shows right now. All right, so they can get... The exposure that is well needed to them. Hold on, y'all. Some of my computer's acting up. Alright, so. They start talking about, you know, has any of them got job opportunities from being on this reality show? And Golden says, yes, some, you know, she's got a spot in a Super Bowl commercial. Um, Kasa says she got plenty of love. All them got love from and respect from being on this show. So that's good. That's what the whole point of the show was, was to prove your talents. And, you know, it's a great, this, this was a great opportunity for them. So they go into basically golden and kind of at least hating on Lisa Wu because she was from a reality show. And they go in how, now you own a reality show, and Golden is in denial. She's like, well, I don't look at this as a, you know, a reality show. I don't go out with you to the mall to go get our nails done like you did on the Housewives. She's like, wait a minute, what did we do on, we didn't do that on the Housewives. And she, you know, basically, she, she's saying that. Well, I don't feel like this is a reality show. It's a show about actors trying to get work. Okay, Trey. We're gonna be in denial. This is a reality show. Everybody on the on the stage is telling her this is a reality show, okay? And this reality TV has done a great thing for us, okay? We have got new opportunities because we've been on this reality show. You've hated on reality stars, you said they don't have any real talent, and because of how, you know, popular reality stars are, you mad that they get 
the jobs that you are supposed that you feel that you are supposed to get but honey okay you just gotta suck it up and yes you are a reality star i know you say you never watch the reality show but you watch one now okay suck it up kind of reality okay because you want it even Paul is like, yes, I'm blessed. I got a house now. My son's in a new school. I don't, I no longer live in a motel or anything. This reality show has done wonders for me. All right, so next, they get into Paula being black bald on the movie that her and Elise did, which we know is Hustle and Flow. And Carlos is the host who is also the executive producer, along with Todd Tucker. And he asked, he's like, look, people want to know, were you blackballed because you were, you know, on this movie and you dated a PA? Or was it because you cheated on your man who was on, you know, in the business with this, this PA? And she's like, well, look, I don't call it cheating. I don't call cheating cheating if the other person starts it, okay? I walked in the trailer, and I saw my man getting it on, okay? So I said, okay, come here, little fine-ass, you know, sexy PA. And, you know, it is it is what it was. People try to blackball me for that. They asked her, was it at least... She said no, it wasn't Elise. Elise was actually the one that was telling her, look, you need to calm down, you need to sit down. And Elise is like, yeah, I, you know, I told her, listen, I know you in love right now, you all, you all happy, but you can't be, you know, basically showing all this in front of everybody. You need to keep this on the low. Now, I understand why Elise said that now you need to keep this on low because you cheating on your man who working on this damn movie yes yes she's right okay and basically what her man was he blackballed her and he called people up he had pool and he called people up in the damn industry and they they you know dunked her ass basically it was it that was, you know, it, it fucked up. She fucked up. But <laughs> anyway, but I mean, I guess it, it came out for the best anyway. She's on the show now, okay? So next is them asking about Paula coming up with the idea for Elise and the fact, you know, assorted flavors. And Paula's like, listen, okay, I came up with the idea about, you know, the, you know, for the sort of flavors. And they asked Lisa, and she's like, absolutely not, okay? I don't understand how somebody who could, you know, who can't even dance or sing would come up with the idea of this. And then Paul's like, listen, I'm going to tell y'all what it was, okay? I was there. You know, audition. I was there about to be in her show, in the assorted flavor show, and I ended up getting kicked out. Lisa was like, yes, she was there, you know, at my house with other dancers, and she kept getting into it with the other dancers, so she got kicked out of my house. And so, um, Carlos is like, oh, so you got black bar from Elise's assorted flavors. And she's like, yes, yes, I got black bar from that. Okay. Well, Elise, if she can't dance and sing, why was she going to be in your show? Okay. Anyways, so also they go into Elise's dating life, who she's dating. She's like, I don't care to, you know, share that information. And they end up showing a, a clip that never got, you know, put on the show. It was her and Golden talking, and she's talking about how she used to date Rick Ross. And Golden's like, really? She was like, yes, he was kind of like a teddy bear for me. But, you know, I was in love with him. And, you know, Golden's like, yeah, I'm not even sure I would date, like, musicians and stuff like that. Like, I was in 50 Cent's video. She was like, yeah, I dated, Elisa was like, yes, I dated 50 too. She was like, oh, okay. So, Carlos is like, so, 
you dated 50 Cent and, and, um, you know, Rick Ross, so how was that bad? And at least he's like, I will not tell that. And he was like, so allegedly, the beef that they have started over you. And then Lisa's like, I have no comments. Okay? And he's like, okay, so it's private, at least. We're going to play a little game. She's like, oh, gosh. He's like, we're going to play Mary, Shag, and Kill. Okay? Who would you marry? Who would you shag with? And who would you kill? You got F. Gary Gray. She also was engaged to F. Gary Gray. And... 50 Cent and Rick Ross. She said, I would shag Rick Ross, um, marry F. Gary Gray, because we were already engaged, and I would kill 50 Cent, which I could already figure, okay? Girl, that was a T right there. I did not know that, that she dated both of them. I didn't know she dated any of them, but that was, that was some good information. <laughs> I guess you have been in the industry for a long time. You are going to date people that you are around. So that's, it doesn't make her a hoe or anything like that. That was perfectly fine. But that was definitely some good tea to, to, to learn. Okay? So next is them talking about going and golden, you know, issues with being beauty like she spilled out on the last episode. And, you know, how her mother was light skinned and she is brown skinned girl. She always felt like she wasn't beautiful because she looked nothing like her mother. Her mother was her hero and she just always wanted to look like her mother. And her mother, they showed a picture of her. She kind of looked like, mm, kind of like Latina. But yeah, it was interesting. She, she said her mother always tried to make her feel beautiful though. She would say, you're my, my little chocolate drop or you're my, my, um, what did she say? My little shiny penny or something, my little brown penny. <laughs> something like that. And then she said she would always get irritated. Like, what does that mean? Like, what, a, I'm your penny. Like, what is that about? And now she's, she has a brown skinned little daughter and she tries to raise her and tell her, Every day that she's beautiful and, you know, show people that look like her and, and that look like her mom and that look like her dad sides of the family. So that, that was good. That was a little positive moment. So they get into them, um, Paula being delusional. Okay. They start asking everybody on the stage, look, Paula. Okay. You said something about, um, Golden, back in the day, throwing drinks on you or whatever. Then you said that a friend th threw drinks on you. Carlos was like, look, your story changed three times. And Paul was like, well, let me set this straight, okay? I was at a town cruise party with, um, you know, Golden was there. Now, it was one time where they, you know, she came by me like, like I'm drunk. Oops, but I stopped that. I got it. Then it was another time. It was almost like a party line. Okay, and it was like five of them. And one of them spilled the drink on me. And God is like, what kind of Tom Cruise party line were you at? Like, what kind of Tom Cruise party you was at? And Paul was like, I don't know where you was at, but I know I was having fun. She was like, I know you don't know what I was doing because you're just making up things. And she was like, well, I'm making up things you haven't even heard for us inside. So they start asking everybody on the stage, do you think that Golden is delusional? And Elisa was like, oh, I don't, want, I don't even want to be on stage right now. And he was like, do you think Golden is delusional? Delusional, Just like, you know, she said she started the sort of flavors. Do you think she's delusional? And then... They go, ask somebody else, do you think she's delusional? Countess is over there like, oh my gosh. She like just making all kind of stuff. And Lisa, Lisa's kind of pushing her. And it was like, Countess, do you think the, um, the, um, Paula is delusional? And she's like, yes. 
Yes, I do. Okay, I'm so worn out and over all these different stories she done told. Yes, I think she delusional. And then Paul over there clapping like, really, Countess? Yes. Okay, and so they go into Forrest. Forrest is in the audience. They give him a mic. So he can tell his side of the story. He's like, look, this is what would happen was, I was at the bar at the Tom Cruise party, and I go back over to Paula, and I saw that she had drinks spilled on her. It was like a line of girls had threw a drink, and I went over to her like, baby, you know, what happened? How did you, um, you know, what happened? And Golden is all like, oh, oh, really? Really? And he was like, yes, really. And you really going to go there? And... He was like, yes, why don't you shut up when you hear a man talking? And everybody in the audience, and everybody on stage was like, ooh. And they looking at Gold, and then she was like, oh, no. You will not talk to me like that, okay? I am not your wife. I am not Paula. I know you want to talk to me like, you know, you feeling kind of your man power or whatever because she squashes it, but you will not talk to me like that. And she shake the fuck out of him. <laughs> so, he deserve that. Yeah, you don't just talk to her like that. Because you don't talk to Paula like that. I don't know what you was thinking. Golden was right. You don't just sit there and tell her to, to shut up. Come on now. But that's it for part one. Video will go up when it's available. Okay? I will put it up there. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Follow me on um, Twitter. And 1K subscriber gift giveaway. You must like, share, and subscribe to this video. And y'all take care and thanks for watching. Another thing, what shows they gonna put up in place of this? I need another show for Wednesday night. I mean, I got my wives, but I need something else. But if y'all know a show going up, y'all let me know. Alright, thanks.